Ah, you hear that? Shy Chef caved and made another unordinary video. I'm kidding, I'm, I'm kidding. The biggest reason for my lack of unordinary videos is because of a Let's Play series and kind of mainly due to topics. I would love to talk more about unordinary, but I don't want to talk about John for like the eighth time. However, I want to touch on a topic that I've already made a video on, Ember. The shadow organization that I've mentioned a couple times and is almost always the B plot to whatever A plot is going on at Wellston. Whether it be kids bullying someone with PTSD, causing kids to have PTSD, strange and very illegal kidnapping. Like Serafina just got kidnapped and held hostage and it got, okay, whatever. Ember has always been a part of the story. Way back when things were simple, when he just used to be about a kid with PTSD being bullied. The simpler times. Now, while I already have a video on Ember out, I wouldn't say it's the best. Not to mention a bunch of new stuff has come out and I want to touch on a bunch of different aspects of Ember. So think of this video as a bunch of little ideas, theories, and nonsense ramblings about a dangerous shadow organization that has killed many people, including kids, and has changed the public's opinion on heroes. Now, before beginning, I realized that writing a script on Monday and Tuesday for a video on Friday about a webtoon that comes out on Thursday with three extra Fast Pass episodes, and the said webtoon being in the middle of an Ember storyline, might not be the best idea. But there are a couple things about Ember that I want to talk to someone about. And my cousin is probably annoyed at me for talking about a webtoon that he isn't even caught up in. Before fully diving into Ember again, I want to talk about Blake. You know him as Blake, I hate how that sounds, I'm gonna call him Blake. I'm aware that it might be wrong. And I want to make a wager. Now remember, I'm writing this on Monday and Tuesday, and I have not seen or heard any of the Fast Pass episodes. So if I'm correct, then I don't know, I'll just lord it over you. But if I'm wrong, then think of a punishment for me in the comments. N no face reveal. Anyways, my wager, and if it's not true, my pitch. Blake's superhero name, or vigilante name. I'm just gonna call him superheroes. What I believe it is, and if not, what it should be. I think his name should be Nobody. Now, why Nobody? In a world with cool superhero names like Ecstatic, X-Ray, Radiance, Genie, Hurricane, and more, why should nobody be Blake's name? The reason it caught my eye is in episode 196. When Blake comes in to save these town folk, when they ask who he is, he simply responds with, I'm nobody. Now, if that's the only reason, I would be a fool to bet on it. Luckily, I have two other reasons why I think nobody would be a great name for Blake. First, classic literature. Unordinary hasn't been opposed to using classic literature to symbolically represent its story. I made a video a little less than a year ago about Shakespeare's plays, but nobody might be a specific reference to the Iliad, a Greek epic poem taking place during, before, and after the Trojan War. The main character, Odysseus, Odysseus? I'm bad with names. Odysseus had a side story where he tricks a giant cyclops and then stabs him in the eye with a giant pole. It's, it's a bit weird, but the reason I point this out is because when the cyclops asks for his name, he responds with nobody. Now, Odysseus was strong and skilled, but a major aspect of his character is his smarts, how he could outsmart opponents, which I think is hinting to who Blake has to become. It's unlikely that Blake will ever get as strong as John, but by learning to fight smarter than John, he can trick him and eventually maybe take the victory. But speaking of John, let's not forget why Blake started this superhero business in the first place. It was to get stronger. At first, he would only fight to eventually get strong enough to take John down. I wouldn't call it a selfish reason, but it is a self-centered reason. He wants to get stronger to take someone down who disrespected himself and his friends. It was to further his own goals. And we do get a small reminder in the middle of this chapter, where he's debating if he should even fight. I have to get out of here. 
This is way too dangerous. Remember, Blake, you started this superhero thing again for training purposes. And that's it. If you go out there and make one wrong move, you'll get yourself killed. Eventually hearing the people in trouble and pulling an Esayawa Bridge Kirito and helping the town folk. And this is why I think nobody is perfect for Blake. Because it represents a shift in why Blake fights as a superhero. He started off for himself. He wanted to get strong. He wanted to be someone special, someone unique, someone who could beat John. However, he knew going into this fight that death was a very real possibility, a very real danger. Yet he still joined the fight because he wanted to protect the citizens. His priority changed from becoming someone important, someone that matters, someone strong or powerful, to protecting people, making sure others don't die. Because it doesn't matter who he is, it matters who he protects. Anyways, I got real out of hands. But the point is, I think Blake's superhero name should be Nobody. Because it represents that, in the end, the superhero part of him doesn't matter. He doesn't need that fame, that fortune, that power, he just needs to protect people. And if it's not, we riot. I'm just kidding. Let's move on and talk about John for a bit, shall we? More specifically, John's involvement with Ember. I hope you can hear the air quotes there. Many people believe that John has some strange indirect involvement with Ember due to his unique ability. The ability to mirror others' abilities. Yeah, that's strange. But also the circumstance of his ability. He was a low rank for most of his life, and then it randomly shot up out of nowhere? It doesn't take an Among Us genius to realize that's suspicious. And it's interesting that John's ability can not only mirror, but improve other people's abilities. Kind of like how Ember has a drug that can improve other people's abilities. But if we're trying to find the connection, that's about as far as it can go. John may have gotten an ability based on Ember research from his mom, but not only has John's mom never been mentioned ever, but more importantly, it wouldn't make sense to the given lore that we have. Webtoon likes to advertise um, webtoons on the main page. While writing this, the computer version is advertising a new series. Now at first, this seemingly has nothing to do with what I was talking about, but it actually does. A couple months ago, on the Webtoon main page, they advertised Unordinary, which isn't surprising. But what was surprising was how they advertised it. They gave us Ember reports. One of the only times they gave us lore outside of a chapter. There are four Ember reports, which are four of the main characters. I'll talk about them all in a bit, but let's talk about John's. Notice his ability and ability level. There isn't one. His ability is none, and his level is 1.0. He has a low threat level, and it's even stated in the written report, exhibits no sign of power. Which, wow, they're bad at investigating people. Even, heck, even Aizen figured it out before Ember did. But if John's mom is a part of Ember, wouldn't they know more about John? Shouldn't they do more than just watch their targets? And maybe more than just where he goes to school and who he's friends with and a lack of ability. I mean, I get that they don't want to spoil things in this report, but like nothing in these Ember reports? It's a tad strange. But let's connect it back to a theory basically everyone, including myself, has. Ember being part of the authorities. Going back to John's report, there is one oddity. The first sentence. Son of William H. Doe, the author of... It doesn't take a creative genius to figure out that the book in question is the titular Unordinary, a government ban book due to inspiring too many people to try to become vigilantes. However, that raises an interesting question. Why in the world would a dangerous shadow organization that is directly tied to the murder of kids have a filter on their reports? Was that in like the meeting? Like, hey, on the docket for today, we need to go over last night's vigilante attack where we killed a large amount of people. Also, we updated the report filter so Unordinary doesn't come up anymore. Any questions? <laughs> However, it would make a little more sense that a government agency 
has a word filter that would block out the title on Ordinary. Which has gotta be like at least a little frustrating. Like now they just can't use that word, that's besides the point. What is apparent is that these reports are likely connected to a government agency. Likely connected to someone with a filter that blocks out on Ordinary. And since the government banned it, it would make sense that it's attached to the government. But let's end this Ember Thoughts video, a series that I might do more of, like blank thoughts and I just cover like a bunch of mini topics on one video. But anyways, let's talk more about these reports, shall we? While I already talked about John's report, I failed to mention the other ones. Those being Serafina's, Remy's, and Arlo's. Also, we could talk about how the Ember member reading this on their phone has the battery on low power mode, get there at full charge. No one but me cares about that, huh? Okay, moving on. Serafina's report provides more conclusive evidence to an issue we already kind of knew. Serafina's attackers are heavily implied to be Ember members. But I think everyone always kind of had their doubts about it. But this report cleared up those doubts. Since her ability is crossed out and her level is set to 1, the same level as John, who they think is a cripple, it's very likely that the encounter was an Ember encounter. And while that's interesting, I'm more interested in Remy and Arlo's reports. Both are given some fun little details, like how Remy is related to the late vigilante Ecstatic. But there are two things that caught my eye. The first one, I have no idea about. It's literally the first words of the report for both of them. Arlo's is former king and Remy's is former queen. It's a little weird to think that they would know that Arlo isn't the king anymore. Yet they don't know who the real king is. Granted, this was before John's secret was released to the school, but after Arlo and the rest of the royal gangs were beaten by Joker. So even if Ember had an informant in Wellston, it's likely someone who didn't know John was the Joker before John kind of just told everyone. Which is more reason not to believe that Terrence isn't part of Ember. Since he knew about John for a long time, the report should have been, hey, he has an ability, or hey, he's the new king. But what's more interesting is Remy's former queen bit, because she's still the queen, and it's unlikely that she will be dethroned. Because even if John wanted to seal to be the queen, it's not a position to give. The Jack is a position to give not the queen, and we already know that Remy is stronger. But what's interesting, and I think I have a little more water to hold, is what's directly underneath their portraits. Remy's is eliminate target. A bit rude, but sure, she poses a threat. However, Arlo's is very interesting. Acquire powers. Which leads into a whole other tangent, and I'll be honest, I didn't think I'd have so many thoughts, but let's just go for it. This could mean a few things. First, it's likely that Ember is acquiring powers. It says so with Serafina's report, Target has previously been acquired. Ember might be stealing powers and testing them, or they might be acquiring them and suppressing the people with those powers. Which is likely why Remy's is just eliminate Target, since it's probable that Ember has her powers through her brother, Ecstatic. Meanwhile, this one is more on the speculative side. It could be Arlo's aunt. You know the one that's vaguely mentioned to be part of the authorities? It could be that she's also a part of Ember and doesn't want the organization she's a part of to kill her nephew, just to take his powers. This could also be why his report feels more personal than the other ones. John's was his connection to his dad, Remy's was her connection to her brother and X-Ray, which is herself, and Serafina's is about the encounter. Arlo's feels, I don't know, like a little more personal. They call him strategic and they give a heads up about encountering him. Almost like they know more about him than everyone else. But those are just my Ember thoughts. This was longer than I thought it would be. Anyways, if you have any Ember questions or unordinary questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to see what you guys want me to answer. But like always, thank you for watching.